Hello everyone, so today this video is focusing on um, the issue of generation, age, that sort of thing. It's actually uh, partly a, re a response to, let's say, a request a friend of mine asked for. And it was quite a specific question. Um, his question was, how does today's society influence teenagers and young children growing up? Okay, and um, that's from my friend Richie. Um, oh, okay, Richie, and to anyone else watching, I've got a number of thoughts on this. There's different angles to take. I think it's quite a broad question um, because society is quite a broad concept. Um, I think every generation is impacted by society to some extent. Um, it, it's impossible not to be. I, I think a lot of people... Um, try to go an independent route or, or some people try to go an independent route but it's near impossible not to be influenced to some extent to, by the surroundings around you unless you're a hermit and live in a, a little wooden lodge out in the middle of nowhere then inevitably you're going to be impacted by society and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's not it's not something we should feel ashamed of or being part of society that's that's okay um, the question was specifically about teenagers and young people. Um, I'm 27 now, so I'm be so just beyond that bracket of the 18 to 25 age group that you often see on on forums and so on. Um, I'm still I'm still relatively young, but I'm also at an age where I've sort of slipped into another generation, so I, I could sort of see both sides, um, or at least have a perspective on both sides. Um, so, like I said, there's different angles I can take. Um, one thing I would highlight, um, in my opinion, we cannot generalise people according to their sort of age bracket. We often hear politicians and others talk about what young people want. Um, and that's understandable, A, because the youth vote's a big vote, and B, because politicians are under pressure to appeal to young people. Um, so I think it's, uh, I can understand why they do that. But what I would say is not every young person thinks alike. I think we have this habit, or the media has this habit of sort of talking about young people as if they all think alike. Young people have debates and disagreements among themselves just as much as anybody. So not every young person thinks alike. Um, in the UK, I would say to some extent, young people do get a bad reputation, um, perhaps more so than in other countries. Um, and to some extent, this is uh, this has some basis in reality because there are a lot of young British people who um, are basically mindless thugs and do what they want. Um, but it certainly by no means isn't everybody. And for every idiot out there, I guarantee you there will be a young person who is doing something beneficial for society, is doing volunteer work, is going on a gap year in a developing country, is trying to get on with their life, is aiming towards goals. So I do get frustrated when some older people have an old whinge about the youth of today and so on. You can't make a generalisation like that. Um... I would uh, speak a little bit about one event I attended last year called an intergenerational debate. And this is basically an event, um, my father was actually one of the moderators, whereby young people and older people debated about areas where they agree, agree disagree and so on. Um, and there were some interesting results from that night. Um, one of the sort of general consensus opinions was that there should be a mutual respect. Um, and someone pointed out that sometimes older people demand uh, respect, but they don't show much themselves. Um, and someone actually quoted what they'd seen, uh, whereby older people would get on the bus and they have uh, they have a right to get on the bus before others, or at least get places before others. But they have a very bad attitude, some of these people, to, for example, young mothers. And they treat them abysmally. They talk down to them they call them all the names under the sun and and so on and i would say to those people being older being retired um doesn't give you a right to treat people like dirt 
and you're not going to get much respect from me if you treat others like that. Now, when I'm on a bus and there's an old person looking for a seat, of course I'll give up my seat. I'll let old people pass, um, and so on and so on. But I don't think age alone is automatically gives people the right to to fa feel that they can do as they please. And this also applies actually in crime. I don't think someone should be let off the hook because they're in their 80s or so on, uh, provided they're of a sound mind. It's different if people aren't, um, if, they've got, if they've got a condition whereby they aren't responsible for their actions. But if they're of a sound mind, then they cannot plead age. In fact, I would argue, if anything, at that age, they should know a lot better because they've had the life experience to, to basically know right from wrong. Um, we can't generalise, we just can't. Um, and I do get frustrated when some older people generalise young people. Having said that, there are some young people who are very selfish. I mean, I've seen, for example, on street corners, uh, large groups of young people drinking from uh, cans of beer, shouting loudly, occasionally harassing passers-by. Um, not always. Sometimes I'll walk past them and there's no problem. But what I would say to them is, even if you're, you think your behaviour is harmless, try and see that from the perspective of an old lady, or an old man for that matter, or a young family. You may think you're doing nothing wrong, and you may not be actually attacking anyone or anything like that, but try and understand that for other people, that can be intimidating. Um, if you're in a group, you're talking loudly, um, just be aware of others. No one's saying you can't socialise together, but that sort of um, behaviour is intimidating. For one thing, you shouldn't be drinking in the open anyway. That's not, uh, it's actually illegal, so just be aware of that. But no, what, what I really want to get to in this video is that I, I believe people cannot really be defined by their age alone. You could have a young person, say, in their early 20s, who's well-travelled, who's had a, a wide range of friends from all over the world, who's been involved in important campaigns, who've done unusual things with their life. And then you can have a person in their 70s who has never been outside their own city, who's kept a very small group of people in their life, or who has only really ever associated with a certain type of people. Um, now I ask you, whose life has been more enriching? I would say the young person. And of course the table can it can go the other way. I've met lots of older people who are very open minded, very enlightened, they have a lot of life experience and we can really learn something from them. I would say there is somewhat different attitudes in the West as there are in some other countries. Now I believe in Korean society there's a sort of um, culture whereby older people are respected no matter what. Um, and I, I respect that's part of their culture, but personally I, I, I don't entirely agree with that um, because it, it gives the idea that being old alone gives you a license to do whatever you want. Now like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to question Korean culture, that's, that's their culture in that regard. But in the context of the UK, I think there are some older people who feel they can say and do whatever they like and speak down to young people. This isn't a case of um, just sort of uh, watching out for those who are badly behaved or something. This is a case of speaking down to all young people and, and basically in some cases treating them like dirt. And like I said, it works both ways. Um, I, I do think everybody is impacted to some extent by the generation that they grew up in, um, including the socio-political generation. Now, I would describe myself as being part of the Blair generation. Um, that is, I was growing up at a time when, well, I'm still, we're all always at a stage of growing up, so that term is a little bit loose, but I uh, grew up when Tony Blair was uh, Prime Minister. He was Prime Minister for just over a decade, so he had a lot of influence, I would say, socially and politically speaking. Um, and I'm all, I've also been influenced by Thatcherism, uh, which came before that. And anyone who's British will have some idea. You don't even have to be in the politics to realise just how influential Thatcherism was, for good or better. Uh, or for bad or worse, I meant to say. 
Um, so I've been influenced by Thatcherism slash Blairism, and there is some similarities between the two. There's certainly linkages. They're not. I, I don't agree with people who say they're one and the same. I don't think they are, but um, inevitably I've been influenced by those circumstances in the same way Americans growing up during the Reagan years would have been influenced by Reaganism. Um, young Americans today are going to probably be influenced by uh, Obama doctrine um, and so on. There's, uh, I, I think powerful political leaders can certainly they they cannot obviously make all the decisions socially speaking but if they're the leader of a nation they can have some influence in the social direction a nation is taking um, much more so in authoritarian one-party states of course but even democratic countries you do see that to an extent um, I mean nobody nobody in Britain can escape the legacy of Thatcherism or Blairism they can say oh, they hate politics they have no interest in politics but politics is interested in them okay um, so what I would say is people should um, are inevitably impacted by their surroundings but they should also try and be themselves and don't be influenced too much by what they feel is convention really I mean they should uh, try and be themselves. I, I don't think, um, I mean that's not to say that people should reject contemporary society and actually that's another issue I'd like to raise in this video. A lot of the time I see older music videos and I see young people commenting on that like oh I'm 16 and I like this much better than music from my generation and there seems to be this rejection of contemporary culture and society. I, I don't like that notion of clinging on to the past. I, I think there's no problem with being interested in, in for example, music from the past. I, I like a lot of music from the past. I like Elvis, I like Billy Joel, etc. But I also like music from today. And I, I think it's a bit boring for people to reject their own generation. You know, everybody's generation is interesting in its own way. My generation has been defined by a whole range of different things, looking just beyond Britain. We can also think, well, it was the rise of new labour, but we can also think there's a whole range of things that defines my generation. Um, the war on terror, the Arab Spring uprisings, um, the rise of YouTube, Facebook. Th there's a whole range of things, too many things probably to mention in this video. But I think everybody is influenced by their generation to some extent. And people should just enjoy what they're interested in and not you know, growing up, I, I'm lucky now where I'm at a stage where nobody really cares about, at my age, nobody really cares about social trends. I find teenagers are under a lot of pressure to conform to certain trends. And if they don't, then they're, they're branded gay or they're branded uh, all sorts of insults. Um, and it, it's very difficult, I think, to try and... Uh, constantly live up to this I may remember how pathetic it was in, in school like if you didn't fit a certain uh, certain form of um, interest or let's say social trend then you'd be laughed at and you know it got at, the, at one point I just rejected it altogether I said look I'm gonna do what I want I mean I wasn't actively rebelling but at the same time I just thought look I'm, I'm not gonna conform to this and I, I was always quite proud of myself the fact that I I didn't bend those sort of social demands um, when other people felt they had no choice. Um, if you're a young person, I would say try and be yourself. Don't don't follow the crowd. I'm not saying be a rebel and be anti-social, but don't follow the crowd. Try and develop yourself as a human being. Develop your own beliefs and interests based on what you see around you, what you believe. Um, and try and think more about the wider world. Don't just think about your own little bubble. Try and think about the wider world. Many young people do, and that's great. So I reject this notion that young people take no interest in politics or the world around them. Um, I don't think that's true. Young British people are not bad people at all. There are a minority who feel they can do as they please. They're very arrogant and selfish. And there are older people who whinge a lot. 
But in conclusion, we cannot generalize. I'm just running out of time, so I'll, I'll leave it for that video. But let me know your thoughts, um, and I'll I'll follow this video up.